Hello there. I am back again to talk about India, inks and pens. And in previous videos, I showed my pens from India. Um, there are quite a few of them. I just wanted to talk about them just a little bit more in context. And um, also about the, Indi the ink I've received from India um, that I've inked these pens up with. I got uh, 15 different colors. Um, in a box from Dayton, uh, India, and they come in these neat little 60 milliliter bottles. They're plastic, but when they come to you, they are sealed, and you have to puncture the top so that you can get the ink out. Of course, from then on, it kind of it kind of gets out. If you uh, put the cap on and you tip it down, it gets into the cap, and then it runs down onto the threads. And I don't know any way of fixing that. I think eventually I want to decant all of these into glass bottles that are more appropriate for fountain pens. But this works, and they work well in filling up eyedropper pens. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, and as I mentioned, and I showed I had a great big bottle of this stuff as well. Well, it is now poured into this massive script bottle full of royal blue Dayton ink. Um, you know... I don't know where I would ever get this much script ink, um, but it's nice to have a full bottle. And the Royal Blue is a decent color, as you'll see in a moment. Well, let's talk about the inks and pens as we go, one by one. Uh, as I mentioned, these are eyedropper pens, most most of them. Uh, this is the Kim ACR Jumbo Double. There is a, you know, the regular nib under here, and you would think that that's all there is to this pen, but then you unscrew the bottom of the pen and you get another nib and another color of ink. And so let's start off with, come on, there we go. Start off with Dayton Crimson. Um, and my handwriting isn't great because I'm reaching around the camera to do this, but that's just what we have to deal with. Dayton Crimson, and this is the Kim ACR jumbo double um, it's a number five rather fine nib it's not particularly wet um, a little bit on the dry side but that's just fine um, the ink it works pretty well um, and for a little uh, card that'll let you see a little bit closer that's the color and uh, it writes fairly well. Uh, it's not one of those colors that I like all that much, and again, it is a little bit unsaturated, just a little. Um, it's more than some of the other colors are that we'll see in a bit. Um, but, uh, and this pen has no flex. It's very, very stiff. But it is fairly reliable, and if you want to carry two colors in one pen, this is one way of going about doing that. Um, let's go to the next color, which would be Dayton Brilliant Red. <clears throat> and that's in the Asa Nauka. This is a wonderful pen. Very interesting looking thing. Um, it's seamless from the end all the way up to the threads, which are right at the edge just before you get to the nib. Very comfortable in the hand. Very lightweight because it's 100% ebonite. And here's the ink. Brilliant red. Um, and this is the Asa, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, N-A-U-K-A, Nauka, I don't know what else to call it. Um, this one's got a little bit more generous flow, it's a medium nib rather than a, a fine like the other one, and it will lay down a bit of, a nice little patch of ink, and there's a tiny bit of variance there, but a lot of that is, is because of the flow and some of the, the give to the paper than it is to the give of the nib. It's a fairly stiff nib. Um, it's, as you can see there, it's got a Gamma nib. Gamma makes this pen, the, pen, the nib that it came with though, was an, it was marked Asa, and it's, it's, this is the only pen I've ever had that I dropped the nib and destroyed it, um, unfortunately. But I had a spare Gamma nib, and, and so that, that's why this one has got that in there. It's a decent red. Um, it's a little bit unsaturated. This is a slightly more yellow paper. Um, but you can see places where there's a bit touch of shading. Um, it's a decent red color, uh, and it, is, it seems to be a true red. Um, not a little orange or anything like that. It does it does go to a little bit pink, like you can see right there on this corner, but that's okay. Um, it's not it's not like 
this brilliant um, kind of, I don't even know what to call that, kind of a, a fuchsia pinkish color. Um, so good pen, good ink. Next one, we're going to go, go with the Dayton Rose Red. Um, and this is in one of my favorite of the Indian pens that I own um, because it was one of the first that I ever got. And it tends to, it looks like it matches the ink. It's this Airmail air or Wallety 69T is the model number. And it comes with this kind of a, a shortened number six nib. Um, and it is a true eyedropper. And the ink is Daytone rose red and this is more of a dark oh not not a burgundy but it, it is a darker red um i don't know i i prefer it to the other two so far um but it's but you know rose red but the brilliant red's not bad but this one i just like the dark that it's darker and the pen is the air airmel 69t in red uh this is a wet writer um and when it burps, you know, it does the, uh, um, the eyedropper kind of burping, which I talked about before. Um, this one burps a lot. I've had this one barf on my hands before, but only when it, it gets really low. When the, the ink level drops to about half and you hold it in your hand, your hand warms it up and the air expands and it forces ink out. That's what the, the eyedropper burp is. Anyway, um, this one has done that to me before. You just have to know what you're doing when you're dealing with these uh, eyedropper pens. Um, the next one is the Mauve Ink. And this is a kind of a, and I'm trying to match the colors in the pens, but I was running out of uh, all of my Indian pens to, to match the colors to, and I didn't have very many greens, but here we go. This is the, the Noodler's Khufu Jade Conrad. Um, it too, it, it, it's a piston filler. Um, which was kind of hard. So what I ended up doing was pulling the nib and feed out and then eye dropping it into the, the chamber there just because um, these bottles are kind of ridiculous uh, to try and get ink out of because it only comes out of that little spout on the top. Anyway, so this is the uh, Dayton Mauve ink and this is the Noodler's. Uh, Conrad. This is actually a really nice pen. It works quite well. Uh, it's a very wet writer as well. Um, and this is kind of a, a more wetter flowing ink too, I've noticed. Um, and this one is a flex nib, as you can see. And look, it's just gushing out the ink there. Man, my handwriting is terrible reaching around this uh, phone. But anyway, so that's the Dayton Mauve. Um, it too can do some shading. Um, it is lighter in um, drier pens. You can see that it's, when dry, it's a little darker, but most of it, it can be quite a bit lighter. Um, and then there's some shading there as you write with it, which can make it kind of fun. We'll do the next one. The Asa Galactic here. Um, now the ink in this one is Dayton. Now, you see how it's paler right there? The, the nib on this one tends to go a little bit dry. I'm not sure why. I think maybe that the cap doesn't seal completely through here or there's some air intrusion or whatever. But occasionally this pen runs a little dry. Um, but the ink is bright violet. Oops, I spelled that all wrong. Let's try this again. Bright <laughs> violet. And the pen is the Asa Galactic. And this one has its Asa nib. It's a nice uh, medium to broad. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a decent writer. Um, it's not quite as wet as the, uh, the Conrad um, or even the Airmel, but it's a, it's a, it's a wet writer. Um, there's no line variation, but just because of the nature of, of writing like with this, uh, this ink and everything, it's, you're going to get some kind of color variation, some more darkness. One of the things that's interesting about this ink, this bright violet, is that it, as you could kind of see, it went down more of a fuchsia color, and then as it dried, it turned more blue. That seems to be a, a something that about these this particular kind of a shade of a color. Um, another one that will do this is... Um, 
Gerbon's uh, Violet Pensee, it will do the same thing. So it went kind of pinkish, and then it's slowly turning more and more blue as it dries. You see that? Um, but it's a good color. This one is one of the more saturated colors in this, uh, this line. Um, the colors aren't deep, though. Part of that, this particular paper, these cards, this is a rather absorbent one. So um, it's, if, the, if, the, if the ink is not utterly saturated, it's going to look more pale on this paper than, than on others. But anyway, it's a decent color, um, nice flow characteristics. One of the things I like about this ink, as you can see here, this, is, this ink right here is pooled up terribly on this, uh, this Conrad one. I mean, I'll show you how much ink is on there. Um, it's a ton of ink, but it isn't feathering, it's not bleeding, it's not going through the paper. Part of that's the quality of the paper, but it's also the quality of the ink. The ink, it, it actually performs quite well. Um, now let's get to the one that is the big bottle, uh, the Royal Blue. And I have this in one of my Boston safety pens. I think it's this one. I can't remember for sure. I think it is. Um, well, let's see what we've got. Oh, no, this is the turquoise. Um, well, I guess we'll go with the turquoise then. This is Daytone. Turquoise blue. And this is a Noodler's Boston Safety. And um, turquoise blue, this one... It, it, you know, these, these pens, they're not gushers, but they, they do write wet, and part of that's because the, the nib is soaking in, in ink all the time. Um, it has a little bit, little bit of flex, okay. and uh, it's, you know, it's being a little bit obstinate at the moment. The color is a little bit paler than I would normally like with a turquoise. Um, when I, you know, turquoise inks that, that I like are things more like the Noodler's turquoise, um, the Iro Shizuki Konpeki, um, but right here you can see it, it looks pretty pale um, it goes on nice though I mean and, and like all these other inks it does perform fairly well now I'll get to the royal blue the one that I have uh, that little huge jug of and this is another new uh, new uh, noodlers Boston safety and this is the Daytone royal blue and royal blues tend to lean a little bit um, on the purple side of blue. And this is another one that where it goes on purple, more purple, and then as it dries, it turns blue, it turns more blue. This is the Noodler's Boston Safety. And any of, the, of you who haven't seen my other video and you may be wondering why I do I have Noodler's pens when I'm talking about in, in pens made in India, it's because the Noodler's pens are made in India. I don't know which factory makes them, but they are made in India. And this is a wet writer. And it has flex. Um, it's railroading it right at the time at this time. And I noticed that's kind of a problem with these these Boston safety pens, is that their flow characteristics aren't the best. Um, but they work. This is a very decent solid blue. It is a, you know, when people talk about blue inks, this is kind of what they think of. It's just a straight up blue. Um, there's not a whole lot of um, there's nothing really, you know, extra about any of these inks. There's no particular sheen. Um, most of them will shade, but most of that's because they have, uh, they, they're they somewhat um, undersaturated, a little bit watery, if, if you want to call it that. Um, so the, the colors come out a bit pale. They're not as dark as some other inks would be, but anyway. It's still a good solid color, and it's not nearly as, as pale and washed out as... Um, Pelican uh, 2001, uh, sorry, 4001 Royal Blue. That one's, you know, it's, it's a rather ubiquitous ink, but it does not make for uh, a nice, solid, uh, saturated color. Next one, we're going to go with the Daytone Blue Black. And this is an FPR which stands for Fountain Pen Revolution, Triveni. And they're called the Triveni, I guess, because there's three ways of filling the pen. It can be with cartridge converter or eyedropper. And I think I've got a converter in it right now. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't want to mess with it. Um, this actually has been a darn reliable pen. 
uh, I ink it up and it'll it'll sit for a while. It'll sit for a long while and it will just write every single time. Um, not a gusher, but wet. Uh, it also has a flex nib, and it's a more responsive flex nib than the Noodlers are. It's got a more give to it, um, even though it's just a nut, small number five. Um, this is actually a pretty good pen for a pen that has a plastic feed. Um, it just works. Uh, I don't know what kind of alchemy or special work they did on this pen to make it as good as it is, but it's a good pen, and it's in that nice dark blue swirled ebonite. Okay. Um, and the blue-black, it is a blue-black, I suppose. It's a nice dark blue. Um, with, a, with a wetter line, it will get very dark. Otherwise, it's kind of this pale, kind of gray, grayish blue. Um, but it's a good solid blue color, um, not as undersaturated as some of these others. Now, the next one is, uh, let's see, this one is in another FPR pen. I'm going to go with the... Daytone Dark Gray. And this is the FPR Muffed. Which is a funny name. I had to look it up. Well, Muffed means free. Um, and this was a pen that was given to me for free. Um, when I purchased another FPR pen, they threw one of these in. Um, and I ended up with two or three of these, and I've given the other two away. All three of them have been great writers. They, they work very, very well. Um, this one's a rather wet writing pen. Um, it has an ebonite feed, which does help to make it um, make those flow characteristics uh, good. It is uh, also eye droppered, of course. Um, no line variation. This is not a flex nib, um, but it is a very responsive, reliable pen. And if you want to uh, to try out a uh, an inexpensive eyedropper pen from India. This is not a bad way to go. Uh, I don't even know if you can buy these separately, but it's a good little pen. Um, and the ink, the dark gray, is oddly not particularly gray. It has a, a hint of blue to it. It is gray, though. Um, and, the, and one of the nice things about this gray is it shows you that the gray is definitely just not a watered-down black. This is definitely a different color than black. It's gray. Uh, with a hint of blue, but that's okay. Um, this is actually one of my favorite, one of the inks that, from this uh, collection that I like the most um, is that gray. Um, I haven't compared it to other grays because I don't have any other grays, but I wonder if it's something like um, Diamine's Earl Gray. All right, the next color is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, not an oxymoron. Is it? Well, it's, it's not what I, I expected it to be. Um, so, this is the Deep Black. Um, and this pen is a guider desk pen. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the original nib that came with this. I don't know what happened to it, so I stuck a, a little tiny Schaefer nib in there. And it's not the the best. This one tends to barf on me, and it runs a little bit dry. Um, there is a touch of flex to it because it's one of those old 14 karat gold nibs. But it, as you can see, that's not very deep, and it's not very black. It's really watered down. It's definitely a different color than the gray ink was, but it's not deep, and it's not terribly black. So to test it on something that was a bit more of a gusher, I loaded this up just a moment ago. And this is a true safety pen from about 100 years ago or more. Uh, this is a Moore safety pen, one that I rescued. And it is super wet. I mean, this thing is a gusher of a pen. And with this pen, oh, come on, you can do it. Maybe the, the flow on this ink isn't uh, as thick as some of the other inks I usually get. But anyway, um, it's a bit darker. It still isn't a deep, deep, deep black. You can still see some variation here. So this is, these, some of these lines are lighter than others. Some are darker. Um, so it's just, I don't know why they call it deep black. It's the palest black I've ever used. And you can see that with one pass, it was just this pale gray color and then the, the black on top. 
Um, and to compare it to the, the dark gray, this is where the dark gray looks blue. You see that? They're definitely different colors. Um, it's interesting how colors look so much different when you compare them to, to another one. So let's put the dark gray back up against a blue and see there's the dark gray with a blue black. It looks almost a, almost a purple color. Anyway, um, the black I think would work um, if you're using a very wet pen um, and then it will actually look black, but then it'll be uh, smeary for a while because it needs, you know, if you're dumping a lot of ink down, it's going to take a while for it to dry. Um, so the deep black was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, it, it performs well, though, just like all of these do. Now, the next one is, a, is called Dark Brown, which, again, is one of those ones that I think is unfortunately named because it's not particularly dark. I guess the shade itself is, but Daytone, Dark Brown, and the pen is a Click bamboo I don't know why it's called a bamboo but maybe I don't know if it's straight and this one's a nice swirly brown semi-translucent material it's got again it's got that kind of truncated number six nib like the Aramel does and it's got a nice ebonite feed um, it seems to be a decent writer I haven't used it all that much I had another click bamboo that was a green one and it was a terrible pen this one is a good one um, not a gusher, but it is a fairly wet writer. There won't be any line vari variation. This is a stiff nib. Um, but it's a good writer. And, um, but as you can see, this isn't that particularly dark. Um, and here it is on the card. It's a decent color, but again, it's undersaturated, meaning that it's a little bit watery. So the first patch is, is pretty pale, and you have to put it on kind of heavy to get it come out dark. Yeah, pens will always write darker than they will swatch, uh, unless you lay down a ton of ink. But the first, the first kind of go with just get, getting the ink on the paper when you're just smearing it on is always going to be thinner and uh, paler than when you write with it. But you can see in the writing that there's some pale spots and darker spots, and that's typical of what we call a shading ink. Anyway, that's the dark brown and the click bamboo. This also was a pen that was given to me um, for free. With an, I purchased another pen. Actually, it was free when I purchased this one, this um, the FPR uh, nib in this Gamma Forever. Okay, the next ink is Havana Brown. Now, this is, again, one where we're going to be talking about um, pen issues. And I don't even know if this one's going to work at the moment, but let's give it a shot. And this is the, oh, yeah, it's just gushing. Daytone Havana Brown. Now, you look at that and you're thinking, gee whiz, that's kind of a dark and vibrant color. Um, this is the Noodler's, let's fix my end there, uh, Nippon set. And it's got the Vishnu three slit, sorry, three time, two slit nib. A music nib, as, and this is a gusher. I mean, it is just pouring ink onto the page. I, I don't even know if I want to drag my finger across that because it's just going to smear for days. And it won't dry for a very long time either. This pen right now is malfunctioning. It is just barfing ink all over the place. You see that? Um, it's almost impossible to write with it. And actually, it is impossible to write with it. And uh, so to be able to test the ink, I had to put it in a different pen, one that is not from India, unfortunately, because I was out of India, Indian pens. Look at that. You see how it's just soaking all that? It just, it's just ridiculous. Um, tons of ink barfed out of that pen. So I dropped it into a pen that I know is quite dry. Um, this is just a, um, a Monteverde Regatta in carbon fiber, and I filled it up with the same ink. This is the Daytone. Havana Brown, which is more of a golden brown. You can see that now with some some a touch of red to it. Oops, this is the Monteverde Regatta, and it's the sport carbon fiber. I didn't want to write that all out. It's a carbon fiber there. Nice. It's all black. This is somewhat of a dry writing pen. The pe the ink is a little bit of a wetter ink. Um, there won't be any line variation. It's a very very stiff nib. Um, so 
the this just shows that the inks can look very different depending on what pen they're in. And I don't know, in this light, it doesn't look that bad. To my eye, the upper one looks darker than the lower, um, but in the camera, it looks they look pretty similar. You can see it's a pale brown ink with a with some yellowy reddy undertones. And on the card, because I wrote it with the Neponset, you can see what was going on there. Um, oh, actually, so here I wrote with the the regatta. So you see kind of the golden brown color, and then I wrote with the Nippon set. You see that? Now, one of the things you might be able to see here, and I don't know if you can or not, but on this where I wrote with the Nippon set, this is what we call halo. So when an ink, as it dries, if it dries darker around the edges of the word and it's paler in the middle, that's called halo. And this one exhibits that a little bit. I have other inks that exhibit it more, but this is one of the ones that does. And you can see like on the end there, how it's all paler through the middle. That's a halo. But the only reason, the only way it gets that halo on, in this particular ink is to write very, very wetly and let it sit there and dry. This probably took 10 minutes to dry. Um, but it's an interesting effect. And I don't know what to do about that Noodler's Nippon set. It's it had replacement parts from the, the, the dealers and stuff like that, and it's just, it just doesn't work. Um, so the next one is uh, Daytone Olive Brown. And we'll write that out here. And this is probably the best writing Indian pen, pen from India that I own. Um, but that's because of certain things that I've done. Anyway, this is the Asa, sorry, Asa. This is the Kim... ACR Jumbo Double. Oops, Jumbo Double. Man, I can't write. Um, then this, but this is the main nib. And the nib in it, as you can see there, see that? Jin Hao. Uh, this is a Jin Hao that has an architect grind nib on it. Um, it's one that I did myself and I fitted it in there. Um, and it is now a, a very wet writer. But smooth, super, super smooth. There, there's some line variation you can, um, because from side to side this way, the line is thick, and then the ups and downs are thins, and that's how you tell it. That's what an architect grind is. They also call it an Arabic uh, or Hebrew grind. Anyway, um, this ink is actually fairly pale, but because this is a very wet pen, uh, it comes out, and I like the color. It's got kind of this. Uh, olivey, greeny, gray color to it, um, maybe a hint of brown in there. Um, but when you write on a more absorbent paper like these cards, it kind of gets washed out a little bit. Um, again, it shows that it's a very pale ink, and you have to lay it down kind of heavy, like at the bottom of these swirls here, for it to come out with the color. This is one where I'd almost like to leave the, the, the bottle sitting out open with the cap off so that it will evaporate out a bit to make the color darker. I don't think that's a good idea because stuff can get in there like fungus and that just wouldn't be smart. But I would, I would love it if it were darker. Um, but it does perform very well again like all these others. It doesn't feather. It doesn't really bleed. Um, that sheet I just took off, for example. Oh, it, it flew away from me. I can't do it. Let me see right here. So as you can see, the, you, I've written with a couple of very wet writing pens. Uh, it doesn't really go through. I mean, there's a little bit of the, go, uh, you know, you can see that there's ink there, partly because there's light coming through the paper, but none of the ink has. Um, and the, So the ink is, is performing quite well. So now we're going to the emerald green. Uh, this is the card. Um, and this is the Gamma Forever that I pulled up a moment ago. And so we have the Daytone. Emerald green. And somebody's going to have to explain to me one of these days why emerald green means teal. Um, this is not the only color. This is the only, not the only company that makes a teal ink and calls it emerald green. Um, I mean, you think about Jerobon's Emerald of Shavor, that's a teal ink. There's, it's not a green to my eye. Anyway, uh, the, the pen is the Gamma Forever. And the nib is an FPR 14 karat flex. Um, it is a very soft, and you've seen this. If you've seen my other videos, come on, you can do it. There we go. 
well, it, there, it doesn't want to flow, and I'm going a little bit fast for it anyway, but as you can see, it's much, very much a teal ink. Um, it is probably the most saturated ink of all of these, um, and I don't know if I've said that about others, um, but it is pretty saturated. Um, it will give you a little bit of line, you know, a little bit of, um, of shading, because as, as you can see here, it's a little paler when it's on light, um, but it does go dark. Um, it doesn't really look great on this, this card. It seems to wash out the color a little bit. It's a little, it's a bit more vibrant down here on this, this nicer, um, sugar cane paper, <clears throat> but it doesn't necessarily a green, uh, to my eye, although it looks more green on the card than it does on this, uh, on this paper. Again, it just shows that colors and inks can be different depending on what you're writing on and with. All right, the next color... I know I'm taking a long time with this. Daytone. And this is yellow ochre. Yellows tend to be very, very pale inks. Uh, this is no exception. Um, it'll, it is much more usable than some, though. Um, the pen is a great pit little pen. It's the FPR uh, Himalaya. And this one has a stub that when it came to me wasn't very stubby, so I stubbed it some more. Um, and of course, stub means that the line, the down lines are thick and the side lines are thin, the opposite of the Kim ACR. Um, stubs are much more common than, um, than architect grinds. This is a wet writing pen. Uh, and the yellow is a nice yellow. It, it's a really solid yellow. And I, I don't really have very many yellow colors. Uh, and But this is one of the, the better ones. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, on this card, it looks a little more uh, mustardy. It isn't. Um, it's just something to do with the light right now. Um, but it's, it's a good yellow color. And it does perform well. Now, this paper typically feathers very badly. Um, so you can see that even though this is went on there very heavily, it didn't feather. So the, the, these inks actually perform quite well. Um, so that is actually the end of them. That was uh, 15 colors of ink. Um, the takeaway, uh, well, I, the takeaway from that is, is that Indian pens are great. Um, some of them are a little bit quirky. Uh, you have to get used to the eyedropper, the nature of an eyedropper pen. Um, let me talk about a couple of things, though, about the pens real fast. This... This Jumbo Double by Kim ACR is a great pen. It writes incredibly well. Um, it's got two nibs, but neither of these nibs are the nibs that it came with. The nibs that it came with were terrible. Um, they were scratchy. They were terrible. The one that was on the end here was so bad that when I looked at it under a loop that the, the tipping on it was actually um, looked like a splatter weld. There was no way to make it any smoother. Anyway, so I replaced both of the nibs, and now it works. But... Um, it came with extra nibs, and those extra nibs work fine. So um, I don't know if it's if they they're they're dealing with that um, or not. But whatever the case, it had what it needed to work work well, and uh, it has. It, it's been a good nib. I, I good pen. I just swapped in that um, Jin Hao nib because I like that nib and didn't have another pen that I was using it with at the time. Now one of the things you'll see right there is you see that little that little divot. That's actually a hole. Um, and there's another one under the cap. You can kind of see a little raised spot in there under the cap. There's another hole there. And this is one of the gripes I have about a lot of the Indian-made um, pens, and this clear one will be a better illustration, is that they almost always have a hole in the cap. But this one is in the right place. What happens, It well, sort of. So... When you look inside of a cap, you will see that there is a lip down here where the where the, the material gets thicker. I don't know if you can see that very well in there right now, but that line that's halfway up the cap is that thicker spot. And what it is, that is supposed to be doing is that when you put the, the, the cap on the barrel, when you tighten it up, that the edge of this section, this flat spot, is supposed to butt up against that ridge right there so that when you close the cap, it will seal and therefore the pen won't dry out. Well, this one, there's a hole here 
and it's not sealing. So that is why this pen always dries out on me. When it sits for more than a couple of hours, it dries out and I have to mess with it to get it to write again. Now, a lot of other pens like this one, the holes, like the hole under the cap here and the hole that it's got right here, that and I, I filled these, that's why they don't look like holes, they look like divots, um, is actually up by the nib. They didn't even bother to put it down here below and see down here it would be fine and now what it does is it releases um the little bit of air pressure uh to keep the well it's it's more it, it's so much more technical than that <clears throat> what what happens is when you seal these pens up and then you unscrew them there is going to be a little bit of suction as the barrel is being withdrawn from the cap and that can pull ink out of the out of the barrel and get and get it out of the nib and have it dribble out that's why that hole is there, so that when you unscrew it and this seal is broken, this allows air in instead of the suction that would pull ink out of the barrel. I don't know if you followed that or not, but that's that's the purpose of the hole. It's a breather hole to allow that to happen. Well, on these other pens, like the Kim ACR, they put the hole above here. So what happens is, is no matter what you did with this pen, it would always dry out. Even though this pen does have that that thicker spot in here, and this one does made up to it like it's supposed to. The problem is, is they drilled the hole above that spot so that it always dries out. So I plugged those two holes and now this pen doesn't dry out anymore. And I think I'm going to have to do the same with this one because I have no way of fixing this gap between the section and the cap lip, uh, the cap seal, um, unfortunately. Um, my... FPR pens don't have this problem. The Treveni and others, uh, they just, this Treveni, I, like I said before, I can set it down and open it up and write with it right away. I've never had a problem with it drying out. These two do dry out, or this one did, and this one still does. Um, another one is this great big, gigantic Gamma Supreme. Um, I love this pen. Great big fat thing. Um, I let this pen, I, okay, so this is kind of an experiment. I did not know this pen had ink in it. I left it sitting in a box full of pens about, I don't know, I'm thinking probably four or five months ago, maybe six months ago, and I haven't written with it. It is full of, I think, SBRE brown ink or something similar, but I haven't written with it. And so let's just see what it does. This is the... Oh, look at that. It had a hard start, so that line right here, it didn't write. But this is the Gamma Supreme. This has been such a fabulous pen. Look at that. Wonderful flow. This pen has been sitting for months. Oh, now it finally railroads on me. So a pen that has been sitting for a long time in a box... It's a handmade pen from India, eyedropper pen, full of ink, that has been sitting for months, and it, I picked it up and it wrote. Um, so when we, and see there's that hole. Let me see if that hole is actually in line with the, the seal of the cap or not, or if it goes above it. So I put the mark, my finger there. Let's see how far up it goes. Yeah, see? So where this section meets the inside of the cap is way up here. And so the hole is below that seal line, therefore it is not allowing the pen to dry out. So this one was done well. The Kim ECR was not. Um, so that's another thing about Indian pens. They have some interesting quirks. Um, this Ace Anelka, it actually breathes through, I think, the slot right here where the, the clip goes through. But this one doesn't typically dry out on me either. Um, and that's because there aren't really any holes in the cap. Um, anyway... You can have a lot of fun with these Indian pens and inks. I obviously have. Um, I hope this has been informative in some way or another. And if there's another one of these pens you would like to see a little more information on, I'd be happy to um, put together another video. I don't have a whole lot of time to do videos and things, but I, you know, it's fun for me, and hopefully it hasn't been terrible for you either. Thanks again, and I hope you have a great time playing with your own pens. Bye.